Oh, God, it's so hot in here. No, I mean, it's it's really hot. But camera competition's heating up, too, so let's get all that and more here on The Morning Jolt. What's up, guys? Mark back here with yet another Morning Jolt episode. How's everyone doing this morning? So now that most of the announcements are finally out of the way at Photokina 2018, man, oh man, oh man, or woman, it doesn't really matter. So I've had several people ask me, you know, like, what do I think about all the announcements coming out of Photokina and what uh, is being brought to the marketplace and that kind of thing? And I'm just like, well, I'll tell you right now, everyone seems to have taken it seriously except for the big two. I mean, am I, am I, am I the only one that really thinks that? Am I wrong? People, I mean, look, tell the truth. I mean, Panasonic, I think they kind of brought the pain. I know Fujifilm brought the pain, and we're still kind of sort of waiting on whatever Sony's going to do. We don't really, we're not really sure when they're going to do that, but they'll probably do it either next month or maybe in November, just like they did with the A6500. But I mean, this is a very exciting time as far as uh, us photographers and videographers go because we are now kind of entering into an age where almost anything you want. Is possible except for the ever elusive all in one hybrid shooters camera. For the love of effing Christ, can we please get that camera? No, seriously, can we get that camera? But we now have more options than we've ever had, whether it be sports cams or drones or full frame, APSC, micro four thirds. Medium format, you can literally have anything that you want. I almost kind of wonder, you know, like, what exactly is driving all of this craziness? Like, why is the camera marketplace so competitive right now? It almost doesn't seem like, it, like nothing's really changed. Maybe the growth of online video, but it couldn't be that. Like, I mean, it, it's been growing for years and everyone has been trying to catch up and provide products that we all wanted, but I mean, it's got to be something else. I mean, I can't think, there, is, there are not that many professionals out there that are requiring these high-end, top-notch camera products. I mean, they literally killed off all of the point and shoot, so it's not even the consumer market. Like, who are they, like, going after so aggressively? Who who exactly are they trying to target? So, I mean, I've tried to figure it out. I think that, you know, Panasonic actually has a really good business model kind of going, whereas the smaller sensors are much easier to stabilize. And I think that that lends a lot of, you know, weight with the video shooters. But the problem is, is that in those situations where they are encountering low light situations, the micro four thirds sensor is just not where it's at. It's not to say that you can't get stuff done with that smaller sensor, but it's just not ideal. But for Panasonic to hop back over and try and do some stuff in this full frame space is both shocking and surprising to me because I honestly, I, I just didn't see them ever giving up on the micro four thirds platform. Now it's not like micro four thirds has been around for very long. So it's, it's, it's a relatively new concept in the camera manufacturing space. I mean, it's always been full frame. All the other kind of sensors, well, I'm sorry, medium format, full frame, and then the APS-C and the Micro Four Thirds were created later. But Panasonic and Olympus, I mean, that was kind of their thing. I mean, they, they were the only two in that space. Unfortunately, I just kind of think that the medium format being as big as it is, it was always kind of a niche. The Micro Four Thirds was always kind of its own little thing because it was kind of a niche. APS-C, not as much because it wasn't as small. And of course, full frame has always been the standard because that is where we all came from was mainly 35 millimeter film. So it was just kind of natural for most 35 millimeter shooters to just migrate right on over to full frame. Bing, bang, boom. For Panasonic to enter into the full frame market is really, really surprising to me. I think that that move on their part not only shows that they don't give a shit, like, I mean, they've already got Canon, Sony, and Nikon to compete against, but I think that they are confident in whatever it is that they're going to be bringing to market. Although, after seeing the SR or the S1 and the S1R, they don't seem like overly video centric cameras, you know, not like they're traditional, which to me kind of seems like that might be the plan from the very beginning. Keep their micro four third system for mainly video, right? And then in those certain circumstances where you need some low light performance, hey, go ahead and pick up one of our. S1 cameras and try that out. With the fact of it being a new mount, there's no interchangeability between those lenses and the Micro Four Thirds. Maybe they're thinking that you're going to buy all S1 lenses and then maybe try to adapt those over onto 
your micro four thirds system. Is I don't know. Is that the plan? I mean, it kind of seems like it would be logical to me. I mean, essentially, that's what Sony's plan was. You know, keep a APS-C mount and then make a bunch of full frame glass for it. And anyone that can't find what they're looking for in the APS-C lineup, yeah, just go ahead and buy our full frame stuff. Unfortunately for me, I just don't think that it meets the same goal in general. Micro Four Thirds and APS-C for that matter just seemed like a, a better option for people that didn't want to carry around the weight, right? It was smaller uh, sensors, so smaller glass, smaller mounts, less weight, less bulk, that whole thing. But now with them going into full frame, I mean, you're getting right back up there into the heavy stuff, right? So I don't know really what they've got planned. I, I think it's interesting. I think it's pretty awesome that they're at least willing to try. It takes balls. It really does to get into full frame space where that whole area has been largely dominated by Canon and Nikon for the better part of 50 years. Sony did it. So, you know, why couldn't Panasonic? There's a really good chance that they could vastly succeed in that area. Maybe still quite a bit of sales from Canon and Nikon. I think they smell blood in the water. I think they can finally see that Canon and Nikon just don't really want to try that hard anymore. So they come out with this S1R and the S1, and it's got dual card slots. It's like a big old dick slap right in the teeth. Canon and Nikon are all like, ow, ow, ow. But then again, they're arrogant and they don't really care. Okay, and then moving on to medium format with this, uh, what, what was it? Uh, the, uh, the new GFX 50R. Again, it's a rangefinder style camera. I'm not a huge fan of the rangefinder style bodies, but, I mean, if you were looking for maximum resolution, maximum light gathering capabilities, medium format is way better in those terms than even full frame. Unfortunately, the larger that size, the larger and heavier that glass. And I, for one, was tired of carrying around the heft and the weight of full frame glass. I seriously don't see myself ever getting into medium format on a consistent basis. But who knows? I mean, as I grow older and mature and slow down. Maybe I'll want to do some extra studio work on the side or something. I don't know. I mean, I, studio work has never been like ultimately my foray. I'm not really all that interested in like full timing in a studio. I like to go out. I like to be out and about. I like to hike and camp and all that kind of stuff. So carrying around like, you know, lighter weight stuff in a bag, that's just my jam. So carrying around one of these while I think that it's going to produce Absolutely beautiful, absolutely gorgeous imagery. I just can't see myself carrying around a, a full medium format system. The whole alliance thing between Sigma, Leica, and Panasonic, it's a very interesting alliance. I'm not really for sure exactly what their end goal is. I mean, Leica is ridiculously heavy. Their prices are massively expensive and i just don't know but i just don't know anyone that uses it i i mean i gotta be honest like i literally know not a single photographer that owns leica well i'm sorry i know a couple but just not personally i think to uh i think to a large extent uh leica is just sort of like uh, i don't know the rolls royce or whatever but i mean i've not really seen any genuine discernible quality differences between leica and other systems but maybe it's just i don't have a super discerning eye i look at overall aesthetic, overall lighting, overall contrast, over like I am not a dig down into the details. I am not blowing shit up to 400 percent pixel peeping my ass off. I just don't do it. I mean, it's just not the kind of thing that I do. I'm not really sure what everyone is seeking uh, out of that alliance. I'm not really sure what the benefit is of everyone kind of combining forces like that, but I'm interested to see what they're willing to to put out there. I'm interested to see what they're willing to develop for the lower end crowd, the people that actually do photography work for a living. I mean, most people that do work are not picking up Leicas for that work. Nothing against Leica. I'm sure they're great. I'm, you know, I've played around with a few of their cameras and they're just super, super heavy. And those lenses are ridiculously expensive. So I don't know, guys. Um, I think that the competition's heating up. I think that more and more pressure is being applied to both Canon and Nikon, and I just don't know if they are ever going to be able to recover the way that they hope they are. The one thing that those two camera companies have above everyone else is they have an extended long lens lineup that is going to help them limp along for God knows how long, maybe one day they will snap out of it, wake up and actually deliver some things that are exciting, exhilarating, awesome. But these two 
these two launches by them, it was a massive disappointment. Had they actually came out and brought the shit, I think that this would have been much much more exciting. But, I mean, with all this craziness of Photokina, all these announcements and stuff, it is a very exciting time. I mean, there's never been a better time to be a photographer or videographer. There is so much stuff to pick from these days, and we now have more choices than we ever did. Alright guys, so that's all I've got for you all today. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, and if you really enjoyed it, go ahead and consider subscribing to the channel. I'm your host, Mark Puckett. Thanks for hanging out with me here on the Morning Jolt episode on the Photo Video Show, and I will see you guys again on on the next one. Peace out.